Well, it's good to be home. Last uh, weekend, as you know, we were in Kansas City. My wife and I were celebrating our son-in-law's graduation from seminary. I had uh, actually never been to seminary before. Mike Coffin, I saw your picture hanging on the wall, on the building. Wow. No, it wasn't the post office. <laughs> Take my word for it, it wasn't the post office, it was the seminary. And I acknowledge, and I acknowledge your bravery to go to seminary and the work that goes along with that. Um, it's, so the seminary does an interesting thing, <clears throat> which I think a lot of schools do. On uh, um, Sunday afternoon, the graduation was at the uh, Kansas City First Church of the Nazarene. And so that's where all the celebration was. But they do an interesting thing. When you go and, and they, they give you a folder, and you open it up and there's nothing in it. That's because on Monday... You need to go to the financial aid office and make sure that all the bills are settled up and uh, where the money is going to come from, uh, and then they will give you the actual diploma. And so we were eating lunch on Monday, and my son-in-law was going to go, and I said, you know what? I've never been to seminary, uh, and I, I would just, I'd just like to go. And so we went down. It's a, you know, it's a pretty amazing building. It's, you know, it's an old. It's got books, classrooms, offices, and uh, just kind of... Uh, just kind of need to be there, but I just happen to remember, Mike. I saw your picture, and uh, that was a good one, by the way. It was a good one. Well, we're uh, we're celebrating the family this month, and uh, a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, we talked about children and their blessing and their responsibility, or our responsibility rather, to them. Uh, last Sunday, uh, Brother Baker, and I feel bad for Lee. Lee was supposed to be out. Running his um, running his uh, race car this weekend, and the engine blew up. Uh, but I just feel bad for you, Lee. But welcome, glad you're here. Uh, if you can't be there having fun, you can be here listening to me preach. Yeah, you know, one or the other. But anyway, um, he preached on uh, uh, out of Ephesians chapter five, uh, the relationship of uh, husbands and wives, and uh, did a very good job, from what I uh, understand. Today we're going to uh, <clears throat> look at the relationship between parents and children. And um, so if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. It's also going to be on the screen, or uh, if you want to use one of the Bibles in the pew in front of you, that would be great. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. I want to give you a little background on this passage of Scripture before we go too much farther. This passage, along with uh, Colossians chapter 3, 18 through 4, 1, and 1 Peter chapter 2, verses uh, 13 through chapter 3, verse 7, are often called the household code passages of the New Testament. In that they, they, they specifically speak to relationships within the family. Now, the originator of, of the household codes is uh, credited with Aristotle, the Greek philosopher who lived several hundred years before Christ, several hundred years before the gospel, uh, before the gospel or, or the New Testament or, or anything was, was even thought of or written. But Aristotle considered the family as the basic building block of society. And so in order to have an orderly society, orderly families were necessary. And so that kind of led him to develop a, a hierarchy in the family. Or in the household, rather, not just the family, in the household. Households uh, generally consisted of uh, men, women, children, and slaves. And uh, so in the development of this, uh, Aristotle put together uh, a hierarchy of dominant and submissive pairings. Uh, the husband 
was dominant, the wife submissive. The parent, usually the father, was dominant, the children submissive. The master, the head of the household, the father, the man, was dominant, and the slaves were submissive. And so they had these, these pairings that really became ingrained into the, into the fabric of civilization. And as the Romans came along, they picked up uh, a lot of the philosophy, of the ideas, a lot of the habits of the Greek philosophers, and began to put it in the, uh, uh, and began to, to and, um, blend it into, put it into their society and their culture. One writer comments that uh, uh, in, in times gone by, we sought uh, advice on parenting from the philosophers of the generation, and now we seek advice from manuscripts and uh, newspaper columnists on how to parent. Kind of an interesting comparison. But um, in, Roman, in the Roman times, and again, in the books of the New Testament, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, all of these, they were heavily, heavily, heavily influenced by Roman culture because they were part of the Roman Empire. And culture has a way of working its way out into the world and has a way of, working, of, of spilling from nation to nation. You know, some of the most <clears throat> popular television programs and movies in Europe are imported from the United States of America. Oh, obviously they're dubbed in French and um, so on, but... Some of the most popular programs, programming, comes from here. Now, that may be good or bad, but nevertheless, that's the way culture goes. Now, the, the, the father of any, any household had absolute control over the family, over the domestic life. And he was the head of the household so long as he lived. In other words, even when the children grew up, had children of their own, perhaps were leaders in the community... The old man was still in charge. He had the, uh, the right and the privilege of doing pretty much anything he wanted in terms of the family, and particularly in terms of children. If he wanted to work his children in the fields alongside the slaves and have them live with the slaves and have them virtually be slaves, he could do it. If he wanted to, he, he was uh, the, the father, the patriarch, was allowed to discipline the child, the children, in any way that he chose. In fact, so, some, of the, uh, some of the recommendations were that you beat them into submission, literally. Father was uh, the, the father in the, in the house uh, could, if he chose to, could sell his children. There's one letter that uh, I I've read several different times from a from a husband to uh, to his wife. He was on an extended business trip, and uh, he was writing to uh, to his wife, telling her how much he missed her and and understanding that there was a. You know, she was going to be having a child, and she hoped that, every, that he hoped everything went well with the, with the, the de delivery of the child. And that, and that when, uh, and then he closed the letter with, he said, "Now, now, that's the culture into which the New Testament came. In fact, even though it didn't happen very often, public pressure just uh, didn't allow this. But even if a child, if a, if a husband or a father wanted to kill his child." There was no consequence. Now that was probably one extreme. And even then, on the other extreme, there were the families that basically nobody was in charge. It was just kind of a free-for-all. Excessively permissive. And so on one side, you have uh, perhaps a strong disciplinarian that perhaps wanted to run his, uh, his home like an army garrison. And on the other hand, it was just pretty much everybody do however you want and we'll see what happens. Interesting that those two contrasts you know, have been around for centuries. Millennia. Hey, we've always had that. And we still do. 
Now, this is the world into which the gospel of Christ came. Now, by this time, 60, 70, 80 A.D., when Paul was writing to the Ephesians, Christianity was considered subversive. And it was considered a... uh, It was considered divisive. It was considered a danger to society because of its emphasis on the equality of all who are in Christ. In Galatians chapter 3, 28, Paul writes out what basically the understanding was that had gotten out into the world. That in Christ there is no slave. There is no male nor female. There is no Jew or Gentile. We are all equal. We are all the same in Christ. 